Artist Richard Whitney of Keene, New Hampshire, paints landscapes from nature in the traditional manner. Working quickly, he has managed to capture and freeze a glorious moment in time. Richard is quick with a brush, but New England autumns could keep him busy for a thousand lifetimes. As the leaves fall, more and more light will reach the forest floor. That will be a problem for the pink eyes of this albino gray squirrel. His more normal colored neighbor, on the other hand, has no problem with the light as he busily searches for acorns. The new carpet of freshly fallen leaves will soon nourish the stems that gave them birth. But of the thousands that lie here, one or two are of special interest to Robert and Virginia Warfield. The Warfields are an artist couple who live near Jaffrey, New Hampshire. Today they're collecting sample leaves to use as models in their work. Bob's notebook is a handy press for the fragile little oak leaves. Bob, and Ginny as her friends call her, are frequent explorers of the woodlands that surround their home. The world of nature has long had a hold on them that grows more intense with each passing year. Their property borders on a small lake. Most of their daily hikes include a stop along its edge to see if any resident or migrating waterfowl are about. There are no waterfowl today, but a normally nocturnal beaver is busy collecting alders for his stockpile of winter food. The term busy as a beaver probably came from people observing them in the fall when they're busy laying in their winter food supply. The temptation to stay and watch is of course extremely great but the beaver will be there tomorrow. Bob and Ginny's creative juices are flowing, and they're in a bit of a hurry to get back to the house. Following careers at Boston University and a custom furniture business, Bob and Ginny discover their life's vocation in 1964. They discovered that vocation in a block of wood, basswood. Bob and Ginny Warfield are numbered among the world's foremost bird carvers. Official retirement age came and went for Bob a few years ago. He barely noticed. His joy is to sit in his small shop and create some of the most beautiful and accurate bird carvings found anywhere in the world. To ensure the accuracy of a bird, Bob relies on photographs, 
mounts, study skins, and of course lots of personal observation. The finished woodcock appears almost ready for flight. But really, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Once Bob has finished carving a bird, it then goes to Ginny, who burns in the feathering and then paints it. Burning in the individual barbs on each feather gives the bird a much more realistic appearance. It's often said by professionals in the field that finish work, burning and painting, can make or break a carving. I'm sure you'll agree that Ginny does more than just finish Bob's carvings. Her work truly makes them come to life. A white-breasted nuthatch appears almost ready to fly to your feeder. A bald eagle is immobilized in flight. A tiny saw wet owl watches the forest floor for movement. This little chipmunk wasn't about to move. Like me, he was stunned when he saw this gorgeous drumming male rough grouse. Now I know I'm biased but I personally think that this is one of Bob and Jenny's finest pieces. Bob, on the other hand, is partial to this Drake wood duck. Leaving the war fields reminds me of another line by Mr. Teal, who said, quote, No one but a naturalist can know the joy of a new discovery in the wild and the sadness of having to leave so soon. <laughs> 